All right, come pack my Pelican case with me. Today, we are putting together a small mic kit for me to do a couple shows with a folk singer named Basha Bulat going on a couple of festival dates. So let's uh, see what's going to happen. And this is Bob. He's going to be giving me a hand today, putting together a mic package for drums, guitar, bass, vocals. There is also a string section, but they are bringing their own mics. But really, we're, we're mostly going to be focusing on the drums today. My mic kit is mainly comprised of stuff I could afford with a few higher end pieces thrown in. For me, having a consistent mic package on tour is imperative even if they aren't the fanciest or most expensive. You can get consistency across every show and really dial in your settings. So here we're starting with the kick in mic. This is the Bayer Dynamic TG D71. I really love this condenser as a kick in mic. Really picks up the resonance and it's gonna go in right over there. Perfect, great. All right, and then for kick out, I love the Audix D6. I love the combination of these two mics as kick in and kick out. They complement each other perfectly. I heard them together for the first time on a one-off when I didn't have my own mic kit and I was sold. I had to go out and buy the pair. Again, not fancy or expensive, but they are fantastic to work with. And that's the goal. Not what's the nicest, but what's going to do the best job. And these do the best job, in my opinion. And that one goes in right there. All right, up next we've got Snare Top, and this is a Beta 57. I was originally sold this mic because I was told at Long & McQuaid that it would be great for female vocals, but it sucks for that. It's actually fantastic for Snare Top. Highly recommend it. Goes in right there. And on Snare Bottom, I love the Sennheiser E604. It sounds totally fine as a snare bottom mic. You can clip it on with no stand, and it's cheap as hell, so how can you go wrong? And that goes in there. And then I've got two more of those for the toms, rack, and floor. Consistent, easy, affordable, sounds great. Just uh, shove that in right there, perfect. All right, now let's talk miking cymbals. I like to do a combination of close mics and overheads. Some venues you need overheads, some venues you don't, but you almost always need a close mic available to throw in the mix. So for close miking, I use these Sennheiser 914s. They are super cheap and sound totally fine, and because they're affordable, I'm not worried about a drummer crashing into them. And then we stick those right on in there, perfect. Looking good so far. Now for the overheads, I really like to use these Neumann Cam 184s, especially for shows at festivals like this where I know I'm gonna be using the overheads. These are a higher end mic that I got a great deal on, used at Long & McQuaid a long time ago, but because they were used, the clips broke right away, so I had to use third party clips, and they've got this sticker residue from the shitty Long & McQuaid price tag, but they are still Neumann Cam 184s, and they still sound fantastic. Also, I love showing up on a gig with these because it immediately gives me cred with the house sound guy. One thing about the 184s is the clips that they come with are so shitty and break so easily and they are so expensive to buy from Neumann so I've just used random third-party clips and the microphones still sound the same. And now we pop those into the case and it's starting to look like a show. And then there is a guitar on this input list and so I like to use the Sennheiser 906. I prefer these ones to 57s because they have a bit of a warmer tone and they have a lower profile when you're putting them up on the amp. Then the bass player is bringing his own DI, but I'm throwing one in just in case, because you never know if you're gonna need a DI. And we can pop that in right there. So the lead singer has her own vocal mic. I don't have to worry about that, but I am throwing in this 58 for the backup vocal. I love a 58. A lot of sound guys will complain about it, but I can make a 58 sound fantastic. So I am not concerned about using one at all. I think if you can't make a 58 sound great, then maybe you should look for a new line of work. I keep this one in this nice little bag that my mommy knit for me. And that can fit in the case right over there. And that is a basic band kit. Then you always need a couple rolls of tape. We can just stick those in right there. Wrapping cables, tape and stuff together, very important. And then because I am also tour managing on this gig, I need my handy travel printer for printing set lists and schedules. And this case here holds some tools and some USB sticks. And this one here is my headphones, extremely important. And then I always top it off with a copy of the input list. Even if you already sent it to the venue, there's a really strong chance that the people who are actually working on your stage have not seen it and could use a paper copy anyway. And that's it. We can close it up and we are ready to go. And here's a clip of the show with Basha playing at the Calgary Folk Fest with the mic kit in action. It was a great success. Everyone had a truly fantastic time, and that's really what we're all here for.